the more people are awake, they get that courage, they get that feeling that they've got this invisible army and they will start standing up more for themselves. So when we as mediums and people that are reporting from whatever they're channeling, right, it's not um, all, you know, come by our, let's all sit by the fire and light some sage. It's not what I mean when we say about spiritually awake. Being awake is, is connecting to a, a group consciousness where we all as a light army can fight the dark people that are creating all of the on this planet. I'd like to welcome back to the show, returning champion, Nikki Allen. How are you doing, Nikki? I'm fighting strong. I'm fighting strong. Look, and I got my happy holiday top on for everybody. Happy holidays. <laughs> and I'm sparkly. And I'm talking with Mr. Handsome 2023. Will you <laughs> remain the champion of handsomeness for 2024? <laughs> I don't Shall know. we look into my psychic predictions and say... <laughs> I kid you not, I know I've just said this, but so many people have been discussing you on my channel, so they've come over to subscribe and watch you and just go, oh my God, he's so cool. He's <laughs> so handsome. The English people are so handsome. Oh, you are like gorgeous. <laughs> well, Thanks I, for having me back, darling. Yes, I, I, like I said before we started, uh, my seatbelt is strapped on tight. I know this is going to be another wild ride as it was the first time. Our first conversation was so well received. We're at, at this point, at this, as of this recording, we're over 425,000 views. Um, <laughs> and it, people absolutely adore you. My audience adores you. Wow. And uh, I, I wanted to bring you back to talk a little bit about a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world, your point of view of it, what you've heard from the other side, what downloads you've gotten, because there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, a lot of fear going on in the world. And I want to kind of give you some people some solace especially in the new year coming in in 2024 and and where we're all going so my first question i'd love to ask you is we've talked a little bit before in our conversation in our conversation about this great awakening uh that we're all going through that that spirituality yeah. the consciousness is all growing if this is happening then why are ancient wars being brought back up you know, like what's happening in Israel and what's happening in the Ukraine and so many other places around the world. But those are two very, very key point, key places right now. Why are we going through that if we are truly evolving? Yes, we are truly evolving, my darling. Don't you panic. And nobody panic. Now, I used this analogy the other day, right? And it's a real, it's a bit of a sad one, but I really don't care. It's like, do you remember, do, are you a Harry Potter fan? Of course. Right, okay. I was glad, I knew you would be. If you weren't, you were going to go down a tiny bit in my estimation. But no, this is good. So I'm only joking. Do you know when they're having like the wars in the in the sky? I can't remember which one it was. Is it Deathly Hallows Part 1? Where the yes. muggles are totally oblivious what's going on. But up mm -hmm. there, they're doing the Expecto Patronus and God knows what, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. they are having this big war and, you know, there's Mad-Eye Moody up there and there's loads of Harry Potters pretending to be Harry Potter and it's all kicking off. But then if you look down there, there's people walking to Walmart, not even knowing what's going on. Do you know what I mean? And this is exactly how I've been um, told what is going on now. It will blow your mind, humans, what is actually happening now because we've got layers of judgment day if you like we've got layers of rebalancing and people are coming in from galactic right the way down to angelic down to spirit world down to our consciousness down to people like you and me to say this is what's happening okay because the people that aren't awake are not aware of what's going on they'll be totally oblivious to how much work has been put in to eradicate all of the dark energy that's going on in the planet. So if we just look at, for instance, I asked about this, Palestinian and Israel. That was one of the biggest hits I got. I've started doing channeling on my YouTube um, channel, and it is really, really getting very popular. And the first one that my guide wanted to address was the Palestinian-Israel war. I thought, wow, this is a bit heavy. You know, I was just wanting to do love and light and butterflies. And he's like, we're going to talk mm -hmm. about this war. And with this war... 
what we haven't realized is for a very, very long time, remember we've had free will and all of the higher beings, if you like, nobody's in charge really, we're all a collective, have just let us run around and create free will. In that free will, there's been a lot of darkness that is particularly gathered uh, and this was described as the underworld, right, in the mm -hmm. Palestinian area, right, and the Gaza area. And so when I said, what do you mean underworld? Julianus, my guide, said, well, it's twofold. It's under the ground physically and also the underworld, as you would see it, the lower energy. So what? So I was kind of like, what does this mean? mean so i just put underworld and then it came up because i google after not before he says push the button love is up push the button push the button and then he, he, that means research what i'm trying to tell you to make it clear when you report it to humankind and so they're they're literally eradicating all of these under earth structures used for you know children trafficking and human trafficking and where all the terrorism cells live out and apparently there's this whole underground network of evil mm. that's been manifesting and growing for years and this war not only is going to expose the leaders so that can turn around but it's going to get he said all of the rats out of the sewer so the problem with that is and this is no please don't ever think that this is me being derogatory to all the victims of this but there has to be collateral damage now, the people who are victims of this war that are totally innocent have ordinarily most probably signed in a contract before they came back down to say, I am willing to shorten my earth experience this time round so that we can help rectify yeah. and get this balance back to how it should be. Yeah. And it's exactly the same with the Ukraine. You've got someone, you know, Putin. And, and believe me, I have to let viewers know, I do not watch the news. I have got no connection with live television. I record what I choose to watch because I cannot handle the illusion of these dark energies perforating through society. I literally want to stay completely organic and connected to source so that I can say, well, this is my view, rather than get tainted by all the propaganda that's out there. And it's exactly the same with Ukraine. The whole point is, is that if there are, you know, this is a great thing. The other day there was a brick in my on my front drive, right? And it's been there forever, right? It's been there forever. And it's right in the way. And I thought, God, why have I left it there? So the other day, thank you for bringing this to me. The other day I picked it up and it was just full of earwigs, wood lice, and spiders and it was like oh and then so I put it um in the flower bed just to hide it right behind a bush and then all of this scattered now I'm not saying our creatures are dark what I'm saying is it's almost an analogy of when you open out something and expose it then these will flee and when they flee they lose their numbers they lose their rank so they lose their strengths and this is exactly what's happening with leaders with the big fat cats and you know um julianus calls them cheshire cats you know when we talk about the likes of bill gates and people like that that are kind of running a lot of what the propaganda that humans have been exposed to um that they're, 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 it's all working towards doing this even now to a galactic level where for the first time ever i've had julianus and archangel uriel say to me we are also being helped by our brothers and sisters and I'm like, oh, that's a bit, that's a lot to take in. That's a lot to take in. They said, no, it's not. You've you've had an Atlantean, you know, previous life, which is true. I've, I actually woke up to it when I was at the GSIC conference recently. And I've woken up to it. And they said, you, you're part of it. And all we're doing now are fighting colonies of people that need to be eradicated, turned up so we can see the underbelly, see how bad it is. And it's like exposing a worm to the sun. It will just shrivel and die once it's exposed to a hot mm. sun. And that's what they're doing. They're literally turning up all the rocks and letting all of the little rats run out and then dissipate. And that's exactly what's happening at the moment. And one of the advice... Um, sessions that were given to me by Archangel, I think it was Ariel, um, that was saying, we need your support in this. And the advice was, don't 
think of the atrocities and the people creating it and manifest anger and disbelief and why and how and when's it going to happen to me? Because you're then entering into a script in the play of these wars that are, that are taking place. So change the script and start sending your energy to the people that are victims of it and send love and comfort. Imagine in your mind comforting a baby or a puppy. Shh, it's okay, it's okay. Because what we forget is when we get in this material energy and when we sit in this physical body, we forget that we are the most powerful beings on this planet. This is most probably the only planet that affects free will. It's a very hard planet to learn lessons on, apparently. Mm. Other planets are easier, right? So when we come down, we can either choose to invest the sending our energy, which we think is nothing. Absolutely not. Even if we go back to Harry Potter, the power of the wand, the power of our energy can change things. We can walk into a room and change the atmosphere of that room by our demeanor without even talking. We can change an atmosphere straight away by us sending love and us sending complete compassion and humility to the victims and to the people that rather forget the angry bit oh, i hate them they're doing this it's really wrong send it send the love the compassion and all of that strong energy towards the victims because the angel said that basically you will create a butterfly effect that will eradicate and expose more and more and show the underbellies they said you, you it said they fr they said it frustrates us how weak you feel you are. You honestly think you are just a human being. And that is a complete lie. You are energy, sound, vibration, color and light that is encased pretty much, you know, that's where the auric field comes into it, one of the layers of our souls. You are encased in this body for your school lesson this time around. And you've chosen the school of earth. Right. And so they're saying, so the prop why we're trying to send people like me, portal mediums, which this is all predicted, as I said to you last time, nine years ago in that in my book, Earthwalkers, it's coming right. And you facilitating us bringing information to the masses is because we will wake up. The more we wake up, the more we're connected with our consciousness, the more we're aware of our energy, we're aware of our personal power. And we can change our own personal script as well as change a script that's going on in a war environment, a script that's going on. And, you know, look at um, the likes of Mel Gibson. He's woken up. He's suddenly, boom, I'm telling you about what's going on in Hollywood. And this is what they're doing. And the wonderment of it is, is that they're actually going to now credible people because when you come across, you know, someone like me with all my crystals and my dragons and all the rest of it, it's like, oh, it's another one of those tree huggers. But they're actually going to credible people. They're like doctors, scientists, people that have got, a, you know, a, an upstanding status. And they're waking them up. And even actors, you know, they, they don't care. They're like saying, this is wrong. This is what's going on. And it is going on. And so we're going through a massive massive reset of exposing these people and the people that are fearing should only fear if they are within that evil energy that dark energy if they're listening to this then they obviously live in the light whether they know it or not because this is what their soul is attracted to okay and they just need to listen to us the people that are channeling the information down, giving you a lifeline and showing you what's going on. So the beauty of it is, if you think about it, darling, if we go back to the 50s and 60s, they didn't know about reincarnation. They didn't know about new age practices. They didn't know about the strength of what crystals can do. You know, we've slowly been integrated this information when we need it for the greater good. And then it's down to people like us to trust that source is completely true and right to then send that out to humanity. And that's why I always say to them, and it's been brilliant, I'm waiting for something to happen now. You know, every time I do a video or a podcast, something flies, bangs or crashes off the wall because they're saying we really are here. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I love that about them. And they are bringing credibility to people that are channeling galactic information, channeling celestial information, wherever it's coming from, they're creating predictions that are coming true. It, even one um, channeling I did live, um, Juliana said, there's big flooding and devastation coming on the 2nd of November, just to back up the fact that the rest of what I said is true. And we got hit with Storm Kieran on the 2nd of November. There was so much severe flooding and devastation 
situation in the UK and surrounding islands, it was horrific. And so everybody's going, oh, my God, he predicted that. Yes, because this is real. We're trying to tell you, don't panic. But the more people wake up and are conscious of their strength and how they can actually manifest their energy to create change, that, that's what they don't believe. They don't believe they've got the ability to change something right across the side of the planet. And that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. And many people are trying to do. They're trying to, um, you know, create this massive doorway for people to walk through and go, wow, I actually do come from source. I actually am made of this energy and this life. I actually can make a difference. And, you know, the same thing, make a difference materially, petition wise. It's like, for instance, back in the, we were still wailing. I said this before a little while ago, we, we were still wailing. We were still killing whales for blubber and lipstick in mm -hmm. the 60s and 70s. And that was down to the power of the people. It's like, no more. We're killing our creatures. Sign the petitions, you know, so you can do material change as well as spiritual change. But we've got to start standing up and being responsible for ourselves because we are renting this place. And so, again, Juliana said, you leave this place as you'd want to find it. But at the moment, would you want to find it the way it is? No. So we've got a responsibility. And also when we are open and when we are awake, we can start invoking that energy and then they can work within us to create change. And then what happens then is, is we share this information. We share it with people that then share it to the younger generations. So the longer term, um, will be that we will be teaching the new leaders of this planet coming up in the next couple of decades to be you know more humanity based more compassion based more based on how we can look after ourselves and the planet without being decimated so that's the slow progress going on but the fast progress going on is is there are galactic entities coming in and assisting us there are celestial entities working their asses off <laughs> to help people it's like i saw oh my god i saw the most magnificent sight i've been so lucky that i've had the seraphim with me i think i spoke about this last time since i you know my years of abuse during my adolescence i used to hear this song being brought to me and it wasn't until my i think it was 30s i was in a workshop and they said hello welcome back i'm like oh i'm sorry i don't know who you are <laughs> rude awkward um they said you don't remember us but we sang to you during the times when you needed us and it hit me that i thought i used to imagine hearing this song um after bouts of abuse right and i thought it was you and they went yes we've been with you all this time and it just because I wasn't awake I wasn't awakened to that frequency you know and it's like a radio you know we can listen to certain things but there's other things that are just white noise because we're not opening out ourselves up to the frequency but the more that we meditate walk in nature sit in our own power the more we'll be able to actually feel those frequencies for ourselves and realize what's going on so the seraphim that they they came in in this session and i was like oh hello my god they're just such fearsome creatures and one of their jobs is to work with archangel ariel and michael to go down to natural disasters and wars and pick up mass souls at one time normally mm. it's Azrael's job but they come down on mass right they're fierce they, they end up manifesting four faces to south all of to face southwest northeast and they are just like grecian warriors and they come down and they collect all the souls and their frequency works on song right and then mm. they take them up to the celestial gardens and then they bathe these souls and i've watched soldiers getting bathed and you can see them, you know, eradicate all of this imagery of human uniform and suddenly they're a pure, pure soul again. And then they're taken to the reality layer back to their family. And it's the most amazing thing to see. So they said, we, Im we implore you to let humans know, think of that imagery of us collecting those souls when there is war, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's there, I keep feeling there's like something going on in China and Korea. Again, there's something bubbling there that's going to happen, but it's not affecting us good people. So people shouldn't be scared unless they are a terrorist. <laughs> Right. Or someone that's going to have their underbelly exposed. Do you know what I mean? And I, I, I totally get it, darling, because I get, thanks to you, you gorgeous creature, 
and to going to Florida recently at the beautiful GSIC conference. I, I get hundreds of emails now a day, and most of them are, I'm so scared. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Literally, the gift of this all is that most people are not aware of all of the stuff going on behind the scenes. You know, Harry Potter, mm. Amanda Moody. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and taking out Bellatrix as we speak and Voldemort and it's literally all happening with and it's and they're trying to do it behind the scenes to try not to affect the human ego as much and they they encouraged me and to tell others recently because I said what do you want me to talk about when I speak with Alex and they just encouraged me to say stop listening to the propaganda stop allowing the illusions to take place and stay rented in your egotistical part of your human form because you know it's, it's really funny, isn't it, how people watch the television and if someone says, oh, the sky's now turned green, we've just reported it, and they'll go, oh, did you hear the sky's turned green? Yeah, it has. And no doubt if we continue telling this powerhouse, this brain, and we ignore the, the pineal gland, that we'll end up seeing a green sky because we listen and we take on board what the people that are herding us everywhere want us to hear. Mm. That's why I won't listen to it anymore. What's happening is we've had far too long of powerful people in their places running puppets. And this is what it's all about. Literally, the strings are being cut as we speak. It's going to take time, but my lot have said 2026 is the year of reckoning. That is when we're going to really start seeing the results. And potentially, we could even get some sort of um, irrefutable evidence or contact from our galactic friends. Yeah, it's, it's something that I've heard from other channels and other really? mediums. Yes, 2026. Really? Is a, yeah, it's the, the year of something happening that is, uh, you know, look, there's. it's not an accident that there's been so, many, so much talk about um, UFOs and things like that, because... It's not just before it was the tinfoil hat people, um, you know, talking about it. But now, like the U.S. government is coming out talking about it and it's been declassified and they're like, no, this is what we're seeing. So there's a lot more of these conversations right. happening. And uh, it's very interesting to see where it's all going to go. I've heard that 2026 is going to be a year of something uh, really? that's from, from others, from others as well. So I, I would have to concur with you. But there let me you ask go. It's a corroboration. Sorry, darling. So I'm uh, so let me ask you, Nikki, um, you were saying that there's other areas bubbling up as well. I've heard, and again, this is just from me talking to others on the show, that 2024, it's going to get rocky. It's going to stay rocky for a little bit, it, yeah. and it, we, will, we will be fine on the other end of it, but it's going to get a little rockier, and that there might be other things happening next year and in 2025 that... It's gonna be like, are you kidding? Like when I, when the thing happens in Israel, the horrific attack. I just said the first words out of my mouth were like, "Are you? I really? Is this really happening again?" Same thing for the Ukraine when that was going on. I'm like, "Are you serious?" Like I was so beyond that. I'm like, I can't believe that this is still happening. I feel like there might be something else like that coming up. Like, are you what really? Korea or China or yeah. something along those lines. Do you see something like that happening for yes, humanity? Yes. The thing is, there's going to be an uprising on different levels. So there's going to be civil uprising as well, because, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I remember my brother predicting this. And even, you know, Juliana saying to me years ago, oh, you, you won't be allowed to go to certain areas in your country. Like, don't be ridiculous. Then my brother started saying, I've had to download because he's obviously a medium like me. I said, yeah, this was a couple of years ago. I'm so I, I keep saying sorry to him. He goes, yeah, we're, we're not going to be able to, like, you know, leave our cities. And I went, don't be ridiculous, Rich. He goes, I'm telling you. You know, it's going to happen so I'm like oh, and he was right we started having Open. these 15 minute cities here but again people have uprised and they've started smashing down the bollards and said no it's not going to happen so there is going to be and as I say the more people are awake they get that courage they get that feeling that they've got this invisible army and they will start standing up more for themselves so when we as mediums and people that are reporting from whatever they're channeling right it's not um 
or you know kumbaya let's all sit by the fire and light some sage it's not what i mean when we say about spiritually awake being awake is is connecting to a, a group consciousness where we all as a light army can fight the dark people that are creating all of the on this planet it's that simple it's not about the kumbaya right so basically there has to be, this is how Juliana said it as well. And I know I'm repeating myself because I've said this earlier before, but I'm going to say it again. He said, imagine that you've got a giant thorn that's been pushed into your side and has rotted and festered away for ages, for eons of time. Just say that decades and decades it's festered away. And he said, do you honestly think that it's just going to be pulled out really quickly? It's not going to hurt. So he said, so we're in the process of pulling the thorn out of the planet, which he means the people that need to be eradicated, the underbelly people, and it's going to hurt. It's not going to be easy because we've dug ourselves so deep into accepting ourselves as prisoners of the state, of the governments, of the leaders, of God knows what. They're all the ones that declare the wars. We don't. We're just sitting here like puppets going, OK, then, yeah, OK, there's a war going on. And then they decide to tell us who's winning and who isn't. Because I said, well, what's going to happen? He said, no one will win, Nicola. I hate him when he calls me Nicola. He said, no one will win. We are eradicating the energies that are creating an ill balance of the yin and yang of the planet. And so we, it will be established. And I reckon by 2032, the calm will come. I'm not saying it's going to be rocky that long, but something will impact the 20, as I say, 2026 and 2032, that is it. Now, potentially, he said it can go two ways. He said, but all the people that have woken up and having this high dimension, as I've mentioned, I think I mentioned this with you before, so potentially if it goes really wrong, then we will just take up all of the enlightened souls and they will go to planets where they can feel comfortable straight away with telekinesis and all that kind of stuff. So they're so highly evolved on other planets, we would just not work there yet. But he said the ones that are open and awake, we could put you there. The others possibly will just end up going to reality layer and then we can go from there. That's the way he said it. But he said he made me feel and he said that is a very, very small possibility He's meaning someone pushing the nuclear button or someone doing something that's going to ruin the planet and blow it up or whatever. That's not going to happen because the problem is we have an integral part of the connection of the source of all the galaxies and universes. If we implode or we go bang, then that's going to create massive, again, ripple butterfly effect for the rest of the planets and the rest of the universe. It's just not going to work this time. And so that's why all these forces are coming in now, because if we continually let Everything happened that's happening, it will go bang. So they're doing everything they can to stop it going bang, taking out the leaders, taking out the people on this underworld stuff, taking out the people that are trafficking people, children, taking out all the dark energies that are pulling all of the strings of the puppets that they've put into power. You know, by showing someone that's got the strength to not be a puppet shows that we're winning that war. So all these leaders that change will start getting in the ones that actually mean business and want to change humanity and change the way that society's going. Because just look at it at the moment, you know, we, we've got another thing that came in um, was Julianus was talking about our, um, he calls them pentacles. I think it's so sweet. Pentacles mm. depict money in the tarot. And so he calls them pentacles to me. So let's talk about the human pentacles. And then he showed me like a box of digital I don't know, language or something. And I thought it was really mystical. I said, is that light language? And he goes, no, I'm just trying to affect the digital era that they're trying to push on us. Because he was saying that the way it was going, they wanted to push us into a credit and society rated um, environment. I went, what? And he goes, yes. He goes, just like in other places. I think he said China. China. Yeah, right. China has yeah, he has a social a social... Uh, a social rating. So if you do something wrong, your rating goes down. And if it gets down to a certain point, you can't get, you can't leave, you can't get any loans. You can't... Oh, it's already, that's been happening for a while now in China. Yeah. Gee, right. So, okay. So people like, not that we're any different or superior to China at all, but he said that's been trying to be implemented into the US and the UK, Europe for a very long time. 
But there's people that manage to get in and stop it. And we're trying to stop that now. They're trying to channel themselves to certain human beings that will be leaders that they can say, don't make that decision. And they won't consciously know it, but they'll just think it's their decision. Do you see what I mean? They're, they're, they're working from within and in the mm. background to say, don't do that. And then whoever's going to be in charge, I'm not doing that. Do you see what I mean? I and do. so they were trying to implement that. And so he said, we need to keep the physical money, the physical pentacles, because once we lose that, we lose control of our credit and our status. And so when he showed me China, well, there you go. You just said that. I didn't know they, that's just, what is that? What is that? So so mm. someone decides what status you should be. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. that, that, They'll be working on that, darling. It's not going to happen. And people, if they sit here, perhaps if they come across this channel, right, and they sit and start and think, what a load of old pants, really? Start watching all of the main channelers and the main people that are bringing this information down. You've just already corroborated 2026, right? I did, I'm just going mm -hmm. by what I've said. I don't watch any videos, mm -hmm. right, unless I, I don't, because I don't want to know. It needs to be organic. And it does anger me that people just think, <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about. We do. We can, and, and, and do you know the other thing that's coming in? And this is a biggie. Mm -hmm. This is a biggie. And incredibly, I didn't say about this, Alex, right, because I, I did let my ego get involved, right? Mm -hmm. And I was at Florida and Elena Danan um, stood up and she said something and it made me cry because I've been told it for the last nine years this was going to happen and I wouldn't say it because I thought that just sounds too BSE right but she actually said it and I went how dare I decide not to tell humanity about this during this time that we're going through this underbelly exposure of all the darkness right? The energy of the Christ is going to enter into our ether, right? Mm. Now, I don't mean that Jesus is going to pop down here and start giving out bread and fish. <laughs> I'd like the wine, <laughs> bit, though. I'm not going to lie. If he comes down and brings the wine, I'm first in place to go, excuse me, I've been working for you lot. I need to be in the wine queue. Just saying, <laughs> don't want the carbs. The fish is a bit stinky. I'm having the wine, right? <laughs> so it's not that. And I said, what do you mean? And I remember them telling me this nine years ago. This is how the birth of Earthwalkers started, the book that's coming out, right? Basically... When you think of Christ, and it's got nothing to do with religion, right? Mm -hmm, nothing to do with mm -hmm. the Bible and all that old pants, right? And I'd say all that old pants. I just oh, you don't have to. You don't have to clarify it on this channel. We've we've spoken about that. And but at you know, religion and Bibles, it's all for control, wrath, sin, and all that. And we all know mm -hmm. that we all connect on love. And I've bought through Hindus, Jews, you name it, anybody, Muslims. They all come through, and they all connect because love connects us. Our ground. Uh, this grounded connection here connects to the celestial beings there through love. And that's how we mediums connect these loved ones to the loved ones. Ooh, what does that mean? So when you think of Jesus, whether you're a Christian or not, right, or whatever, Catholic or whatever, I don't know. But wh whether you are, what do you think when you think of it, Jesus? So I said what well, was healing, love, empathy, teachings, openness to a higher power, the connection to the Holy Spirit. La, 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 la. And he said, right, is, is there any negative connotations to the word Jesus to you? I said, no, just the word religion and the Bible. And he goes, that's absolutely fine. Good. He said, but when you actually think of the essence of him, what, what does it make you feel? And I said, exactly what I said. And he said, and that is why we're bringing the consciousness of Christ back in. So he said, so people might start thinking, oh, I've just seen Jesus in a meditation, right? Because he isn't. I'm so sorry again, but he was a human being. I and I literally exposed this to the whole of the conference because I thought I'm going to say it now. My granddad told me when I was a child after I saw my dad who died two days before, fully manifested at nine years old, said to me, "You're going to see things." He goes, "Because you know where you come from, don't you, Nicola?" So I said, "Where, granddad?" And he said, "We come from the blood line of Mary Magdalene." Mm. And we come from French Romany family that came from the French line of Mary Magdalene. And it's really funny that in 1452, when I discovered my guide, when I went over to Rome, after he told me where he come from, when I went to Trastevere and he said, you were welcome into the house of Mary Magdalena, 
in 1452, there's just a running theme of me connecting with Mary Magdalene. And I've even had um, psychic artists and people say, I've, I've, I've written, you know, the Mary Magdalene. And I'm like, yep, that's, I've drawn her. Yep, that's absolutely right. Or they'll say, have you, have you got a connection with Mary Magdalene? Yeah. And now I'm quite open in saying it. But when you, perhaps nine years ago, people have gone, oh, she's a bit of a nut up. Right. But now people are more open to it because they're thinking there's chaos in the planet. There's chaos in humanity. We need to start listening to these people because they know what they're talking about. And so Jesus, to me, was the most magnificent seer, medium and healer of that time. Absolutely incredible beyond anything, because there was lots of people open to his teachings. Now, because religion's got a hold of it over the, you know, the hundreds and thousands of years, it's now tainted. So if you do this, it's wrong. If you do that, it's right. If you listen to a medium, you're doomed. They, they like, you know, connect with the devil and all the rest of the old rubbish that they teach them. And so fair play. However, the consciousness of the Christ they've told me was coming in. And it's exactly what Elena Denan said. I could not believe it. She said, I've just got news from the Galactic um, Federation of Worlds to say that they are going to implement. It's been agreed in the high court. They're going to implement the um, energy of the Christ to hit the consciousness of people so that we can start subliminally exercising our energy of humility, teaching, love, healing. And I've never seen such a spike of emails and messages in my life, thousands a week to me saying, this is really weird. I've, I've had dreams of Jesus. I've, I feel like um, I'm not touching things because I feel like I'm not real. I'm getting synchronicity. I'm getting angel numbers. I'm hearing my voice being called. I'm going, get in. Welcome to the new world. And that is what's happening. But people think because they're in their physical bodies, they think it's going to be something physical. They think, like I don't know, a source is going to drop down and do, do, and they're like, oh, a mashed potato mountains. <laughs> so th close encounters of third kind in case anybody doesn't know what i'm talking about they're like she's talking about mashed potatoes now but do you know mm -hmm. what i mean sorry about the accent and you know it's not going to be all physical that it's all a lot of it is going to be frequency based because that is believe it or not most nearly every other intelligence out there is made of frequency light and sound that is why sound energy is going to be huge next year sound frequency sound frequency apparatus sound frequency music they're literally the high court whatever the source is are bringing in the element of sound for healing it's even now been incorporated into hospitals right and the next thing they're bringing in is their crystal technology let's face it right these things that people think, right, are just lumps of like tree hugger stuff. It isn't. All of this has been left in the planet for us to use to our betterment. You know, people don't realise they're in your televisions, they're in your phones. We need crystals for everything. The pineal gland, crystallisation that's now manifested into this meat blob in our brains. But it originally was crystalline. And that's why it can connect and create this consciousness connection and so they're going to start bringing in crystals that work with sound vibration that will bring healing and it's been going on for years people talking about med beds you've got the med beds that the power people want to create which are the ones that they say can trap your soul and all the rest of it and the propaganda around that. But we're not talking about those ones. We're talking about the ones that are going to start coming most probably. It's going to get more and more spoken about from next year. And the med beds that are coming in will be using technology that's bought from up there into crystals to integrate a holographic. Um, he showed it a bit like, <laughs> God help me, why did you pick me? Why did you pick me? Do you know Star Trek, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know the holographic deck? You know, the holodeck, yeah. Yeah, the holodeck. It's a bit like that. So they showed me this bed and then this crystal working it, just like a crystal would power a phone or something like that. And then they showed like this holographic, um, I don't know, kind of like rays going up and down the body, just like in Star Trek. 
So, do you know, and I think that people that created Star Trek, that they were channeling stuff there. Because if you mm. go, even go back to the ones from like the 70s, they had these magic beds and they had a go up and down their body, didn't they, to scan them and to mm -hmm. see what was going on. And so really some of the stuff that actually comes through, you know, the um, powers that be are a bit too thick, don't realise that a lot of the things that, that are exposed to us are you know, someone channeling to that producer or that director to say, this is what's going to happen. This is what we're bringing you. Mm. And it goes past the egos of the people that just want them pentacles for whatever's going out on the telly. So sometimes, and even Harry Potter, you know, my God, she must have ch had so much channeling. Because when you actually look into stuff like the power of the wands and the power of the minds and, you know, the different dimensions and the use of creatures under all, everything is just like an avatar that is the spirit world and the all the other celestial frequencies and layers, right? The avatar people and the humans are literally the fat Cheshire cats wanting to just annihilate and consume everything, including mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And when I first watched Avatar, I must have watched it. I know it was a long film. I just kept. And when the, when she goes, I see you. I'm like, oh. I see you too. I see you too. <laughs> <laughs> and just you know what I did, Alex, right? After the conference, I was totally unspiritual. I said, okay, we're going straight to Universal Studios. I'm going straight to Avatar. I'm going straight there. And literally, I went on that ride and I was straight in the queue again because, oh, my, I was in heaven i was literally there and it just that is like the spirit world isn't it it is so that is the light army right avatar is, is the light army pandora is the light army and the humans are the dark army and they even try to infiltrate and get in our avatars it's not happening and people have not got a panic exciting what's happening at last we're digging out the filth i'll get off my soapbox now it's pretty it's pretty fascinating yeah because i've i mean i've always said that about when i've interviewed a lot of these people in hollywood that that had these big movies and i always wonder like how do you how did you come up with the ideas when you write did you does it does it just come through you and they're like yeah sometimes i'll write and then all of a sudden um i i look down and i go who, and read what i just wrote and i go who wrote that I don't know who wrote exactly. that. Exactly. And what what is that? It's it goes back to Victorian times automatic writing. Well, yeah, Anybody I mean, it, you know, it's like oh, they literally just sit and then it will flow through. And oh, that's, no that's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, Gene Roddenberry who came up with Star Trek, George Lucas who came up with Star Wars, um H.G. Wells who came yes. up with the time machine and 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 all of um Journey to the Center of the Earth and all these amazing War of the World these amazing books, they, they, they didn't exist before his time. I mean, Charles Dickens wasn't talking about spaceships. Um, that was just not his time. Uh, yeah. Shakespeare wasn't talking about that either. It was this moment of time where it was time for these stories to start coming out into the world. And they just started to come out like crazy. Uh, so when the, when the humanity is ready for the idea, it will come. Yes. Just that, like oh my goodness, you've absolutely nailed it. it. That is why my books are going out as spiritual fiction, mm -hmm. right? Because, because right. if they went out as fact, it will just be the certain few that will go wow. So they created the most incredible fictional story with the most strongest characters. My editor said, I hate you. I said, Why? <laughs> and he said, you can write fiction as, as, as perfectly as you can non-fiction. He goes, how did you come up with this? I said, I didn't. It was a download. It was a dream of five hours, and then I just wrote it out. And so what happens is, is that these, like George Lucas, oh, my goodness, I adore Star Wars, anything like that. I am totally, anything mm -hmm. not of this world, I'm on it. And they've just done this series here called The Lazarus Project, Mm -hmm. um, in the UK. I don't know if it, it's gone out. It is an American version. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is just perfection. It is about a group of, you know, secret people that have worked out how to bend time and reset it to a certain date. So if anything goes wrong or the world is like, you know, endangered or it possibly, you know, the nuclear bomb might go, they can reset and put it back to a point like a computer saving, you know, files, mm -hmm. go back to reset point and then carry on going. 
And I'm like, as if they don't do, they don't have a worked out time bending. Of course they have. There's, there's <laughs> no much. It's just so ridiculous. They've worked so, out how to manipulate time. There's absolutely no doubt about it. You know, so, look at, we've got this place in Liverpool. Um, oh my goodness, it's going to totally escape me because everybody's going, what's the, what's the road? What's the road? Um, I think it's Brook Street or something. It's in the middle of Liverpool. And there are so many people, hundreds and hundreds of people that have experienced time slips in that road where they'll go into a shop. You know the one I'm talking about? I can't remember the blinking name of the road. All you've got to do is put time slips Liverpool and it will come up, right? Well, that's what's, but that's the Mandela effect. Yeah. It's just like the Mandela effect. You're like, wait a minute, did that happen? Did that, I thought that happened. And like, so I always like to ask this question. See, sure, a Star Wars fan. Is it Luke, I am your father? Or is it I am your father? Luke, Do you remember what? It's not. I am your father. It it's is not. not. It's not. In the movie, it says, I am your father. Are you joking me? There is no, in the movie, it does not say Luke, I am your father. Though everybody, whoever makes fun or parodies that line, always says, like, Luke, I am your father. It's the same as um, Michael Caine never mm. said, oh, my God. Oh, do you know what? I've forgotten what they say now. I told, oh, my goodness, I can't remember. He's never, ever, they, they quote him and do exactly the same quote, and he's never, ever, ever said it. And I can't even remember. It'll There's so many me. of those things. There's so many of those little things. But that's just kind of that time slipping thing, which is fascinating because I've spoken to quantum physicists about it. It's a, it's a, oh, many, many. I've actually had two, I've had two to talk about it directly. I had them on the show and we just had long hour, hour and a half long conversations about the Mandela effect and what has actually happened on a quantum physics level, not just yeah. as a tinfoil hat level. So I hope that comes out on the recording. Did you hear that bang over there then? I think, that's I think we did. A lot. I hope that comes out. <laughs> hear it. it get, there's someone just goes boom right and i was doing an interview a couple of weeks ago and then this just one this bloke just walks in it turns out it was the grandfather of the person who's interviewing me howard i'm like rude howard rude so i don't know if someone's <laughs> copied to me, but it keeps going boom i hope it comes out on the microphone well if anybody's there for me we'll talk after after we after the finish okay, of the darling, no worries. <laughs> but I, you know the other thing as well that they've shown me is teleporting Right, that, I've been shown that years ago. I don't, I don't care. Now I'm going to say, oh, I used to worry that people are going to judge me. But you know what? Take it or leave it. But I, and I've seen them change particles from one object or person into another tank thing. It's it's and, uh, it, it, that's I that's kind of like science fiction aspects. But again, the more I talk to quantum physicists, the more these ideas aren't as far out as they were ten or fifteen years ago. Because now quantum physics is really explaining a lot of this. I mean, just quantum entanglement is it throws materialism out the door. And, and these kind Absolutely. of ideas. So a lot of these crazy ideas that quote unquote crazy or sci-fi ideas um, that were insane or just purely science fiction before, there are aspects of, I mean, look, a rocket that lands itself, that is science fiction. Yes. And now- we have a rocket that lands itself. Uh, and right. Mars was complete science fiction. And yeah. we're probably within 50 years of inhabiting Mars. If we yeah, want to. If we, we just haven't gone, we haven't gone to that. So it's already inhabited from what I've been told. Well, so hey, you know what? That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I start sounding like a conspiracy theorist because I kid you not, right? A year ago, if you said to me you'd be talking about galactic influences and you'd be talking about, you know, power and dark energies, so I'll be going, oh, no, no, that's not me. No, 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 no. I just do love and light afterlife and all that kind of stuff. But I can't deny what I can't choose, what I can and can't say because of how right. people take it. And literally, that is what they've been bringing because the fear is palpable. The fear is palpable. People are thinking the nuclear, you know, nuclear war is going to take place. It's going to get worse. But you know, yes, there is physical wars going to take place in front of us. However, the main war is the spiritual war to reset the balance. And literally, we'll be filled with so much more tranquility, humanity, humility. It's just going to be such a beautiful experience because it's gone so wrong, it needs to be rectified. And that's all that's happening. We're rebalancing what needs to be changed. That's it. It's that simple. So let me ask you this. 
in regards to we've been talking a lot about geopolitical stuff, meaning more wars and countries and things like that. But mm-hmm. in the same battlefield, though, there is the financial systems. There are, you know, the corporate hierarchies. Uh, there is, I'm sure, healthcare. There's so many other areas, specifically the financial systems. I mean, we as a as a, a society, we're overdue for that that next shoe to drop, like the 2008 thing. It happens every eight years, nine years, ten. We're late. We're and a lot of people are fearing, like, oh my god, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Do you have any information in regards to the financial system and what's going to happen to our money and where we're going to go? First of all, as I said earlier, they told me that I say they it's either guide or angel energy, whoever comes through. First of all, they said that they're trying to they're definitely going towards eradicating what they were trying to do, which was put us all digital and get us all controlled by oh, you put your recycling out, you can have five more credits, you know, a bit like total recall. They're eradicating mm. that. That doesn't feel like that's going to happen at all now. Um, what also has happened is, and I feel I, I honestly feel, did they say it was Trump that started to try and implement this? They're trying to, at the moment, gain, he calls it equilibrium and balance with the intrinsic pentacles throughout the world, right? I don't do big words. So basically what he was trying to say is they're going to try and bring a balance that everybody has the same value everywhere rather than keep changing the rates and currencies of everything sure. so that we can all live and have the same values. So like a carton of milk will cost the same here as it will over there in the, in the US. They're trying to bring that equilibrium in and they're working on that at the moment. And again, this is consciousness is coming in and incorporating themselves into the leaders that they are going to try and choose because we, we don't choose our leaders they get put in no matter what people say about you know oh I voted for this I voted for that I don't think that works out from what I've heard from this lot so they're trying to get a balance where we all are at a level that we are at pretty much the same wherever we go over the world which they think is going to be quite simply done don't know how. So it's about don't worry how it's going to happen. Know it's going to happen. And if we all say, I know this will happen, we're all affirming something and feeding into the energy to make it happen. Well, well I think, right? I, think so it... I know it will happen. So we're going to get that equalization. We're also that they said again that we're trying to work within. And what I think they mean again, I know I'm repeating myself, but it feels like they're going to start subliminally. I know that we can't operate against free will this is what he said we can't operate against free will however the more we rise the vibration of the planet and the more people we wake up the higher the frequencies the easier it is for us to whisper or perhaps speak to someone that is more open to that leader and go have you thought about doing it this way oh yeah let's put that let's implement that planning that's a good idea can you see what i mean and Mm -hmm. so they'll then start creating better living circumstances start investing more in health and worrying about how many weapons they've got so it's all that's a slow turnaround that bit that's a slow turnaround but there's definitely things afoot as you say it's going to be rocky because i've never been exposed to the information they've bought me recently ever it's all been love and light what angels do the afterlife the reality layer and all beautiful stuff like that but this stuff they've been punching home is like whoa this is a whole new world for me so I'm just being introduced to it to my, myself, really, because I'm just entering into this new, new rebirth. And incredibly, my dad even said, you know, back in 2014 from the spirit world, when you see this symbol, that's your new rebirth, your new awakening. And I'm like, what, another one? You're having a laugh? And it was a triangle with a circle on the top. Oh my God, when I go to the, the conference at Florida, the first screenshot that um, Elena Denan puts up on the screen is the Atlantean symbol, which is that one. The triangle with the circle. And then I got all these flashbacks of all these dreams and stuff that I had, all these colonial wars, and suddenly, boom, I've gone up this level to get all this information about the world, you know, the state of the world, which I've never, ever thought I would work with. I didn't think that was my path, but it is. And so they're incorporating people around the leaders that are either elected um, to then create, What about doing this policy? What about doing that? But the people still need to sign, they said their papers, which is petitions. We still need to make our voice heard. And the petitions, 
the possible civil uprisings that will take place. There's going to be something else happening in Russia and Ukraine that's going to hit back in the news. April, May um, time next year, I'll say there's some rumblings in China. There's going to be um, some rumblings. Obviously, natural disasters are going to continue because people have still not been educated enough on how to look after the planet. So if you kick a dog too much, it's going to buy it back at some stage, and that's what's happening. So Indonesia, there's going to mostly be some earthquakes. Um, Hawaii, there's a hot spot there that could happen there. We could either get um, a volcano or an earthquake there. Floods, there are things going, but it's all eradicated. It's not the end of the world. It is changing the script. The act, certain actors need to be retired. Certain directors need to be outed so that the script can run as it should. And we should play out um, the story of Earth a lot differently. So mm. people have just got to keep saying, yes, I can't wait for 2026. It's all great. And picture the white army against the dark army and not think it's all come by our. That's the problem. I think some people think being spiritually awake is, you know, just turning into some, okay, you're, I'm going to go and sit in the grass and just oom it out. It's not that at all. It's just being aware of your own personal power and aware of the energies going on in, in the universe. And so, as I say, so many people are feeling it. And hearing it, you know, I keep hearing frequency in my ears. I keep hearing a low humming in the house and I can't find out where it is. Electrical things are going wrong or or lights are blaring and then going back down to normal. It's all part of it. You know, they have to create a bit of a disturbance in the force. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. um, to Why they're working hard and trying to eradicate um, all of this this darkness that's gone on it's, too, it's just too much you know and I, I'm sure I'm sure someone said to me about Palestine and please forgive me if I'm wrong but I'm sure someone said it's one of the biggest hotspots for paedophilia and so when I then hear from Juliana saying we're eradicating the rats and getting rid of all of the underworld perhaps that's what they're doing and unfortunately that involves a war they need humans well, to go in and eradicate it well that area of the world has been in turmoil for the last 2000 years. Yeah. It's interesting. There are areas of the world that have more turmoil than other areas yeah. of the world. There's, so there is something, I don't know what it is, but there's definitely some energy that is causing it to, that it's constant. It's constant. It's constant. It's yeah. There's constant. a lot of portals. There's a lot of portals yeah, it's, there it's constant, that connects down to lower energy. Definitely. Um, Cause he kept talking about the underworld, but I think it, it's like people, I think well, not people, but the hierarchy of the celestial planes, galactic planes, wherever they are, just like we've had enough now because there is a ripple effect, you know, with, and again here, Oh yeah, we haven't got this because of the Ukraine war. What's that got to do with anything? Oh, you haven't got this now. Food's gone up because of the Palestinian war. What? what the? And that's what you hear. That's what stuff you hear in the news. Because of the Ukraine war, your electricity is now going up. Is it? Well, okay. And people are like leaving their lights off and using candles and turning their heating off. You're like, this can't, this can't be sustained. We're supposed to be here learning our lessons and going back. Um, after our incarnation and reporting back to souls, connecting with our soul cluster and waiting for the next exercise. We can't keep coming down into chaos because all we're going to experience is just the karmic ramifications of all of these rats running around creating their chaos. So it's got to be eradicated to a certain level. Look, we're not going to be walking on rainbows and floating around happy ever after. We're always going to have darkness here we have to you can't see light without experience some of the dark however it's just got a bit too much now you know and it's time to stop it before it gets too far because if we don't have all of this uprising and all of this weird stuff going on that people are worried about someone will press that button or a flood will flood the world or whatever. So they don't want that to happen. That That is the last thing they want to happen up there. And this massive disclosure of the energy of the Christ coming in, I that was, that's part of my book. That I thought that was a fictional happy ever after. Mm. It's, it's happening. And I, I can't wait to find out. Not only did Elena corroborate, I'd, I'd love to find out if anybody else you know, anybody watching this has heard it from another medium or another channeler or someone else because I was blown away when she said that because I knew, I knew nine years ago that they were going to incorporate that to try, because there's so much hate, fear, worry. We're allowing our egos to imprint on our souls. 
And that can't happen. We've got to have our souls pushing out that and acknowledging we're on a human experience, but still remain intact in here. And so that is potentially why that beautiful tranquility of the Christ energy coming in. Oh, that is just going to be. We already started. It's already started. I've had so many people say, do you think I'm a nutter? I saw Christ in my meditation. I'm like, get in there, embrace it and go for it. Forget the stories of the Bible. Yeah, I know we do happy holidays, but that's not, I do it because it's, it brings so much festivity and joy, joy and happiness to children. It's nothing about the nativity. However, the actual end energy that he created when he was on the planet and the energy is created for thousands and thousands of years and that coming back into our consciousness get in and do you know what the religious people are hate us for it how dare you um what's the word bless you know bless me bless me you're talking about the energy of the christ well do you know what you know he's not going to be standing here giving out bread but he will be bringing his consciousness into yeah. people to think love not hate if I may quote uh, the great Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, Jesus might have been crucified in one day, but his teachings have been crucified for the last 2,000 years. And that's pretty, that. pretty, right. pretty accurate uh, to that. Is there any other message that you would like to say to the audience that the other side wants to portray, to, to send out to the audience? Because there is a lot of fear, a lot of people who are afraid because they're watching the news or they think that the world's coming to an end or things like that. Is there any message of hope that you can give? Uh, from the Every time that you watch something on your screens, this is what he said to me, Julianus, right? And just remember guys, he's not a made up figment of my imagination. He's been with me my whole life. He told me where he came from 1452 Trastafiri Rome. And I went and found him and he's in the St. Cecilia's church. And I found him there and he exists. Okay. So I'm not just sitting here and this is part of my imagination. So believe me when I tell you that he says, apart from these screens where you've got the channelers and the beauty of Alex, every, Every screen you watch, every word that you listen to, and every every horror that you see pervades you is just an illusion. Okay, they're trying to bring fear and hatred in so that you can manifest your anger, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make you angry and scared. Don't enter into that. Remember the love. Remember the comfort in the child. Remember comfort in the puppy. Hold on to the love. Hold on to the love and let everything else rise above you. If you get something come in to, that says sign for this, petition for this, do it, be the voice, but know that you are being carried, you're being held, you are not alone, and you are and we are working as hard as we can to alleviate all of this disruption. And it's like it's like just say a building needs a bit of, you know repairing and you've got all the scaffolding up and there's loads of chaos and there's there's skips everywhere a workman it's all flurrying it's like oh my god this is horrendous we all have to create scaffolds we all have to create chaos to get to where we need to get to repair so just go with it and know that everything you see in here one is most probably not the truth but two is just another step to the form being drawn out for us to heal so please don't panic. Send love. Send your thoughts to the people that have honoured their soul contracts and volunteered to go back up through all of this awful war and all the others that are lost through natural disasters. Just send your love. I hope you're getting up okay. Thank you, Seraphim. Thank you, angels. Thank the angels. Thank your guides because they are working in the background to change this world, to make it better for you and generations ahead. Trust me. I promise you. Just wait and see. This is all about regeneration, rebirth, and a better planet. I promise. Nikki, where can people find out more about you and the amazing work you're doing in the world? Well, you can come up to the planet Mars. I've got a nice little condo <laughs> <up> there. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it, my dear. I wouldn't doubt it. 
<laughs> NikkiAllen.co.uk is my website. It's currently being rebuilt because it's very old and I'm so excited to get a new one up and running for the new year or pop over to my YouTube channel. That's where you find me the most on my YouTube channel. Just hop in Nikki Allen, N-I-C-K-Y-A-L-A-N and you'll find me there. To be quite honest, if you put my name into Google, I'm at all the social media sites and I'm here ready to hear your comments, ready to see what you've got to say. And of course, I address all the fears that, that you mentioned and I really hope that I've helped to allay those fears and just say come on now we're literally just going through change and change is never ever easy but wait till we get the results we're looking for money living society everything will come to an even keel trust me just wait and see Nikki I appreciate you for coming back on the show it is always a journey having you on the show uh it's such a wonderful time thank you again for everything you've Pleasure, done. Pleasure, darling. Appreciate Pleasure. It. Do you know what? I, you've, you've had an easy ride because you got me on my philosophy soapbox because I was going to say, look, I don't want any of this like sweatshirt stuff going on. I need a vest next time, please. <laughs> I appreciate you, my dear. Thank you. Blessings. Best, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Click on one of the videos below to continue your journey and don't forget to subscribe.